Hi, my name is Heather Feather. I'm the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today I wanted to talk about science and the mind. I'm not actually talking about science of mind, which is a fascinating, very positive philosophy if you're looking for positive philosophies. I highly recommend science of mind and the Baha'i faith. There are lots of faith traditions that are inclusive and positive. Um, neither here nor there, what we're talking about today is science and the mind. How inclusive is our beloved science of the quality called mind in relationship to particles, in relationship to cells, in relationship to living organisms? How much do we incorporate into the matrix that is science, mind? And um, there are aspects and facets where science has touched on this principle. Um, so I guess it depends on kind of where you park your eyes. <laughs> Specifically, what I'm wanting to talk about today is Bruce Lipton. Um, he's what I would call the forefather of epigenetics. Epigenetics is where we look at the influence of environs, the influence of rather than altering the the gene DNA and the intelligence within a given gene, it's alteration in the environs and how how genes express in alternate environs. So Bruce Lipton is somebody that was studying um, stem cells 47 years ago. Before the masses even understood the concept of stem cells, he was focused in that vein of study. And because he was so focused in, in this quality of research, he started really looking at what is causing cells to operate in the way that they operate. Are we, one of the things that he held, which I think is a brilliant concept to consider is that if genes cause us, you know, like my um, grandparents and my parent had cancer, therefore my likelihood of getting it is much higher probability due to genetic programming being the reason that we have the given traits and health that we have then um, he, he elucidates over and over again in his videos. And that means that we're victims. We're victims to the, you know, the paradigm we were born into. This is just my lot in life. You know, it just so happens that I'm going to get cancer very likely because it's back there in my ancestry and my gene pool. He has found through his studies about 10% of what we in modern day research and science find to be um, connected or linked to your genes, your genetics, 10% of the likely manifestation of you having it is linked to your genes. So this is revolutionary to the way we collectively pretty much consciously think about illness. We think about dis-ease as a thing that is handed down in a lot of ways, you know, lots of, lots of variations of dis-ease are handed down. He is has through his studies and through his focus. So I highly recommend if you have YouTube, certainly look at Rare Bird Medicine, subscribe if these videos interest you. But also I would invite and invoke for you to research and look up Bruce Lipton. He's, he does a lot of really silly videos with his nephew, who's his media director. But he really is a brilliant I mean, to, to be the forefather of this concept of epigenetics, I believe he worked with IONS, the Institute, Institute of Noetic Sciences in Petaluma as well, um, because I once, I once got to hear some of his teachings through an IONS presentation, our Institute of Noetic Sciences. Anyhow, he, what he started doing is changing the environment. And he started noticing that if you are working with that, that basically mind is affecting the way our genes play, <laughs> the way they play each day. So um, really fascinating studies he's done. And I don't want to get into, I, I do kind of, but it would just take more than 15 minutes to get into the, the meat of his studies. Um, so I want, what I will do is give you some examples of how this is true. So the placebo effect it depends on which study or calculation you look at, but an estimated 30 to 40 percent, most studies would say 33 to 35 percent of people that take a placebo or a sugar pill in relationship to a scientific study, a certain portion are given the actual medication and a certain portion are given just a sugar pill or a pill that has does not have the medication, 
it just causes them to have the experience of thinking they're taking the medication. They're not told this is not the medication. They're told this is the medication. 30, so we'll say 33 to 35% have healing as a result of having taken a sugar pill. So there is, that, that is actually an exponentially high percentage from a scientific study perspective. 30, 33 to 35% is a, is a large result, you know? So um, to have that kind of result is, is fundamentally evidential that, that healing of disease or um, some disharmony in the physical system, mind or consciousness must have an influence because they were not given the medication. They were just, it's just their consciousness or their mind that was told that they were given the medication and they healed. What? One of the, another component of this, it's just kind of a simple look into a slice of the pie called mind and its influence on our genetic results and its influence on our health and wellness and its, its influence scientifically, <laughs> um, aside from the placebo effect concept, is this quality of many, there are many adopted children, adopted that get the exact same type of cancer that their adoptive parents had. So not in their gene pool, they were adopted. They came from a different genetic line, but yet they, they have the exact same type of cancer, the exact same type of illness that their parents that adopted them have. So there, there is, again, an indication that it's environment or consciousness or mind or some type of ex exposure to a certain level of consciousness, stressors, environment that influenced that result in their physical expression. So, so those are some of the simple concepts um, that kind of can illustrate and have us take a deeper look at why it could be viable that mind is a larger influencer. And um, we know this in quantum mechanics because it is the observer that causes the probability wave of subatomic particles, as we've been talking about, to collapse and become a particle in a specific space-time location. So um, they remain probability waves until the observer is present, until the consciousness is present. One of the beautiful things I really loved when it was brought to my awareness is where is the mind? And, and, and immediately when I was first asked that many, many, many moons ago, I thought, oh, here, it's the brain. But no, that's the brain. <laughs> where is the mind? So there's a beautiful organization called HeartMath Institute, and they did studies on our heart and studies on the electromagnetic field of our heart. And the electromagnetic field of our heart is the largest electromagnetic field out of any of our organs, including our skin, which is our largest organ. <laughs> It is, it is the large, it's about three feet. So anyone, anyone within uh, a three foot radius of Heather Mackey, anyone that is within that radius is literally within the electromagnetic field of my heart. So there, there are components of physicality that extend beyond the locality of the, the quality that we're talking about. We talk about heart, heart is not exactly in the center of your chest. It's a little, just slightly to the left of your chest. So when we talk about heart, you're thinking about this item that is located here. But if you want to comprehensively, scientifically talk about heart, heart extends to three feet radius around, uh, you know, whatever entity it's within. So it's, its influence of locality is much larger and vaster than we initially understood as we expand in our awareness of science. So the reason I, I, I love epigenetics and I find it fasc fascinating is because so much of the conditioning and the programming in this realm is, is this concept of being a victim to one's genetics. And there are more and more and more and more studies that are really um, awakening consciousness to the highly viable <laughs> likelihood that it has more to do with environment. It has more to do with stressors. It has more to do with consciousness. It has more to do with your attitude. 
then it has to do with the lot you're handed. And that is an empowering, empowering thing to be offered. And in order to be offered it, we have to hear about it. And, and I actually used to work for a science of mind <laughs> church, and that was where they had a, a talk from Bruce Lipton from the IONS or Institute of Noetic Sciences. And this is where I was like, oh, oh my gosh, it's not our genes. Wow. So, so we actually have the capacity to choose our environment. And I understand that there are many components of that. Um, maybe you are impoverished or maybe you don't have the finances to physically change where you live. Doesn't change the fact that there's a free park somewhere you can go sit in. <laughs> Doesn't change the fact that you can choose this XYZ book that offers your consciousness positivity um, or this YouTube, you know, of Bruce Lipton or this awareness that will awaken your consciousness to a new environment, to new consciousness, to new awareness. So I think it is just a beautiful gift to all of us to have the opportunity to understand epigenetics a little bit. And I wanted to offer that to you. If you haven't been offered the awareness of epigenetics, it's a fascinating thing to study. I am also doing a class called Be a Healer. So we have three classes coming up from Rare Bird Medicine. Two of them start next week. We have Read the Tarot, which will spend six weeks going in depth into reading the tarot. And my goal is always to hand you an understanding that when you walk away from the class, you go, oh my gosh, I, I kind of know these cards. I don't even have to look at the book. I can actually look at the card and I, I know what this card means. Um, because that, that was something I really craved in the, in the 32 years I've been reading and doing and learning the tarot. Our Be a Healer series is going to, we're going to look at, um, the concept of being a psychic surgeon, a medical intuitive. What does it mean to heal in, in arenas that are not steeped in the physical? <laughs> what does that mean to be a healer in alternate realms? We will look at your, you know, your, primary modality that you use uh, psychically. Everyone has psychic capacities. Are you more clairvoyant? Do you tend to get images in your head? Do you tend to get feelings? Do things tend to feel off or on for you? Is it more like you hear a, a calm, still voice in response to something? Or do you have like more clear cognizance where you have sudden illumination of something you didn't know before? So we'll, we'll look at those modalities and find your ideal modality to become a psychic surgeon or a medical intuitive. And we'll look at healing in general. There, there can be a lot of uh, healing concepts of healing is where we, we, the healer, <laughs> take healing energy and send it to the sick. And so we're also going to talk a little bit about the distinction between that and actually holding consciousness of wellness using the power of the mind to see the result in time. <laughs> and we have an upcoming class as well called Be a Witch, which we will look at um, witchcraft, Wicca, the craft. We definitely will look at Heather's perspective on it after 32 years of studying this topic. And I have what I find to be my truth. But as always with my classes, we will receive your beautiful wisdom and sharing if you care to share. We'll see the, receive a community of like minds and we'll discuss variations, aspects of witchcraft that are not for me, but maybe they're for you. So we'll offer that too. If you go to rarebirdmedicine.com and click on the classes link, there is going to be further information on all three classes and information on registering for those classes. And today I just wanted to say, what environment are you giving your mind this day? What environment have you placed yourself in? Is it a peaceable one? Is it a calm one? We do know very well that stress is one of the leading harbingers of, of illness and disease in this realm. And, you know, heart disease is one of the number one killers. Um, and stress is one of the number one factors in that. So are you finding ways to give yourself peace? Are you finding ways to give yourself grace? Are you finding opportunities to share with your consciousness things that really soothe you and bring... Um, wonder and all <laughs> to your day. I, um, yeah, I've spent most of the day thinking about this and I just thought I'd share it with you to think about too. I hope you'll be able to join us for one of our classes. 
And in the interim, blessed be.